I'm Jonathan Iyer. I'm a, a research assistant professor here. Um, and I've been, been working on this, this project since the beginning. And so what I'm going to be talking about today is uh, perspectives from uh, econometric research, throwing things through the econometrics machine, uh, from both uh, New Orleans and, and Fukushima. Um, so not thinking less about um, who is returning, but more about who is going and where they are going. Um, and so what I will say and my, my hope when I had started this is that there was going to be a silver lining in natural disasters, right? And the reason behind that is that natural disaster risks vary across space. So unfortunately, my, for my two graphs, the, the scales are exactly opposite. Um, but in the United States, the red is showing us areas that have highest natural disaster risks as measured through HAZUS, right? And we see, um, so, so darkest red is the highest disaster damages per capita. And what we see, right, is along the, the Gulf Coast, right, so hurricane country, and in, in kind of tornado alley, that's where we see really high disaster damages, right? Similarly, in, in Japan, and this is just thinking about uh, seismic risks, right, there's areas of Japan that are more exposed to earthquake damages, and there are areas that are less exposed to earthquake damages, right? So the goal, the original hope of this was to think about the way that these disaster risks are varying spatially, right? And the idea being, right, much like people have said that relocation after disasters can increase your income, maybe relocation after a disaster can reduce your disaster risk, right? So we normally think about uh, migration as, as a push and pull thing, right? There are factors that push you out of your, your origin, you know, crime, right? The, the caravan of migrants coming from, from the Northern Triangle, right? There's a push factor that moves them away, and there are pull factors that move you towards places. People like to move to the Bay Area because there are lots of jobs, right? Disaster, and we have to weigh these, these push and pull factors against the cost of migrating. It's very expensive to pack up your family and move to a location, right? Particularly if you're thinking about moving from uh, relatively cheap and low income places into relatively expensive places, right? The calculus becomes very hard if you're living in, let's not say New Orleans, but one of the outlying rural areas, right? Making a low salary, and you have to weigh this decision about, I know I can make a lot more money in San Francisco, but the rent is $4,000 a month, right? So disasters may give us this push out the door that people need to, um, you know, they have to move somewhere. They're going to have to bear these costs of moving. Um, and so maybe, given that you've got to leave New Orleans, maybe it's time to think seriously about where opportunities lie. Right? And if disasters force people out of dangerous places into places that aren't as dangerous, right, then maybe future disaster losses are going to be lower. Right? So this is also going to matter because we know that disaster losses grow as people get wealthier financial disaster losses, right? Just in the sense that if a disaster strikes, you know, let's look at, at Malibu right now where the fires are. Those houses are all $10 million homes, and so it's going to be a $5 billion disaster. 50 years ago, that would have been maybe a $1 billion disaster accounting for, um, for inflation, right? So if people are moving to safer locations before you know, we get richer, we might see lower real damages in the future because people are able to, you know, to get out of these very dangerous areas um, and move towards places that are safer. Right? And so then it's important to understand um, who is moving after natural disasters and where are they moving to and how do they make the decisions about where they move. So I want to, to highlight um, 
while I've done kind of similar analyses between these two studies, it's important to think about uh, where we can and cannot map conclusions between this. Because these, these were two different disasters, and it, it can lead to different catalysts for moving and different types of people who are moving. Right? So in Katrina, right, we had a, a very damaging hurricane. Right? Category 5 is the highest category of hurricane, and 175 miles per hour is relatively high on the distribution of, of hurricanes. Right? And then we had follow-up government failures, or government failures that occurred because of, of levee constructions, things like that. Right? And we lost a huge amount of the housing stock just in terms of, of flooding. Right? And then we had an initial evacuation that happened before the disaster, as was mentioned. Large numbers of people, you know, they knew that the storm was coming in. They knew it was going to be bad. They even knew it might break the levees. And so you had large numbers of people who were able to strategically evacuate beforehand, who had more flexibility after the fact. Right? And then you had evacuation during the disaster. The people who were moved to the Superdome, who, who then had no flexibility, and they got on the bus or the airplane to go wherever they, they were. Um, and I didn't put it up here, but it's also worth thinking, hurricanes are not new to the Gulf Coast. Right? Most people who live on the Gulf Coast have experienced a hurricane before. Right? And that's going to influence their perception about risks um, and about how they update their beliefs about future risks. Right? And we compare that to, to Fukushima, right, where we had an earthquake and then a tsunami and then, then the nuclear meltdown. And there was, of course, no evacuation, no strategic evacuation beforehand because you, you didn't get to see the earthquake moving in in the same way that in Katrina, you had three, four days to see that there's probably going to be a bad storm. Right? And it was a staggered evacuation. Right? Whereas in, in Katrina, the entire city flooded, and it, it, was, it was more evident where the extent of the, the risks were. And then large areas remain inaccessible, whereas in, in New Orleans, uh, it's dried out. And again, getting back to what I said about experience, um, well, because of, of the, the nuclear attacks uh, in, in World War II, Japan has more experience with radiation than, than most countries. This is not a frequent thing that people interact with. And nuclear radiation has a particular fear um, because it's not something that, that we frequently interact with. And so we might expect people to respond very differently to a hurricane, which you know goes through every five years, then to nuclear radiation, which is, is a relatively rare thing, and it's cognitively a very scary thing. Right? So keep that, those differences in mind as we think about um, how and who we're moving. Right? And so this is then just to, to give you a picture. Right? So the left-hand side, uh, this is a portion of those 800,000 homes that were flooded out. Um, large portions of the housing stock uh, just permanently gone. Um, on the right-hand side, I have a picture of one of the, of, of part of the nuclear plant on fire uh, because you can't see the radiation in quite as stark a way. Right. So the first paper um, comes from work that I did with, with Adam and with, with Noah Miller over there and a colleague at um, Ohio State University. And so what we think about is do people change their destinations during a disaster? Right? We know that there's baseline churn in um, where people live. And New Orleans um, was experiencing population decline even before the hurricane. Right? Um, and you know, in the New Orleans case, it was about crime or it was about low economic opportunity. Katrina obviously increased the number of people who were moving away, um, but did it influence where those people were going relative to where someone who left New Orleans in 2003 would have gone? Right? And so what we did with this is we observed the number of people who left the New Orleans area and which US county they went to. Right? This is based off of where you file your taxes. Right? So we see where you filed your taxes in 2003, where you filed your taxes in 2004, 
and we can say, OK, where did the people who left New Orleans go? Right? And how did the destinations of these people change um, between uh, the year of the disaster and years that the disaster didn't occur? Right? This is a graphical representation. Um, so the scale on this is, is troublesome because so many people moved to Houston, and it kind of breaks the scale. Right? What we see in 2004 is we see a large number of people moving to the areas in the Gulf Coast right around. In 2005, there's more of an explosion throughout the country, and far more counties are receiving migrants. But right, even if we look around this area right around New Orleans, the small counties in, around New Orleans were receiving migrants when they, when they didn't in normal years. Right? And we see, if we look at 2006, the pattern falls back to kind of what it looked like beforehand. Right? And what usually matters is distance. It's really expensive to move your family. Economics. And people tend to move to big cities. In 2005, distance became more important. People moved less far after the disaster than they did in normal years. They didn't care about economic conditions as much as they did in other years. Um, we looked at whether people cared about previous disaster risks. The answer is a little bit, but not really. Right? And because so many people were moving, and because people tended to move not very far, and the Gulf Coast is all hurricane country, you had an overall increase in the number of people who were exposed to disasters. Right? In terms of Fukushima, um, I used uh, the, the data set that, that Shingo provided, which he'll fill us in on a bit more uh, later. And so what this allows us to look at is individual level characteristics um, of who moved to what location, uh, or the characteristics of those people. And if the movers and the non-movers are systematically different people, that's going to be really important for how we think about recovery and, and you know, aid allocation and things like that during the disaster. Right? Who moved away? Um, the key determinant of whether or not someone left Fukushima Prefecture. So these are all people who moved out of the immediate area. Um, the key determinant of whether they moved within Fukushima or elsewhere in Japan um, is their evacuation zone status, whether or not they were required to move, um, as was mentioned. And this is the opposite of what we might expect. People who were forced to leave because of radiation didn't move very far. People who chose to leave um, tended to move much farther. Right? Um, and again, a strange result here is that people so, whose homes were relatively um, un, sorry, um, not surprising result, people whose homes suffered little damage were less likely to move the area. So that is our economic consideration. Um, and women were also more likely to leave the area. But the, the, the big thing here is, is this potentially strange result that those who were actually exposed to radiation, who had a larger experience with the risk, um, tended not to move very far away from it. The survey also reports why people moved. Right? There are a dozen um, options, and they say, did you choose your new home because of earthquake risk? Did you choose your no new home because of radiation risk? Right? So again, people who lived within areas where evacuation was required were more likely to say that they didn't care about radiation risk. Right? People who were in an area that the government said was, was safe from a radiation standpoint were much more likely to say, I moved across the country because it is far away from radiation. Right? One thing that I find very interesting about this is that there are no consistent patterns in who these people are 
that moved out of, that moved out voluntarily and said they cared about radiation. You know, gender doesn't matter, age doesn't matter, income doesn't matter, that whether or not you're living with four generations or, or it's one generation, that doesn't matter. These are systematically different people in the way that they're perceiving this risk and making these decisions. Right. And the way that I am starting to think about this is that we have two different types of people around a disaster. We have these um, safety-minded people who observe the disaster, even if it's not close to them, and seriously update their beliefs about how risky the world is. Right. And then we have non-safety-minded is probably too harsh, less safety-minded people who are more interested in preserving their existing uh, economic and, and social structures, right? But this does raise some questions about who needs post-disaster aid, in the sense that if governments are, targeting, are attempting to target aid um, to help people rebuild after a disaster, it's kind of different if you're thinking that that's going towards people whose homes fell down versus people who, um, whose homes, you know, they can still sell and they can, they can, you know, move because they are now concerned about these risks, right? So the big conclusions here is that sadly, people are not going to become safer because they move, because they experience a disaster, right? Distance is too important and it's too costly and the costs largely fall on poor people who can't afford to move a thousand miles. Um, and the people who do move due to disasters are often, they're a self-selected sample, right? They're a different type of person than those who, um, who choose not to leave after a disaster. Right? And so there are a few remaining questions here. The one that I think is very large is if demographics and income and family size, if that doesn't explain these safety-minded people, what does, right? How can we predict who's going to leave if a disaster takes place or um, versus those who will stay, right? And we're beginning work on, on looking at how people migrate after disasters because in both cases there's economic damages. Um, so even if your house in New Orleans survived and you're physically safe, um, you're going to experience lower income if you stay, if all of the jobs went away. Um, so we're beginning work on that. Um, and then finally, we've looked at, you know, who says that they care about radiation, um, and we're beginning to look at, do the people who say that they move to a destination because they care about radiation, do they actually move to a place that has less radiation? Or people who said they care about earthquake risk, did they actually move to a place that has lower earthquake risk? Um, so those are a few of the, the ongoing uh, questions that we're looking at, um, and thank you. So basically, uh, my presentation is also the product of the econometric machine that you mentioned that. So I've tried to keep it more simple, and we, I want to make more emphasis on uh, the policy implication. Our basic research question is that return migration factors. So what, what factors are pulling people back to their original home after the uh, 2011 Fukushima nuclear accident. And the uh, second uh, question is that uh, we're really focusing on the radiation effect because radiation was a very key uh, determinant, was supposed to be the key determinant of the people's decision of the repatriation. And also, the, as I told you later, the decontamination costs very much. And it is sometimes it is controversial. Uh, how how much do we do uh, this uh, decontamination? So that's why we're focusing on uh, radiation effect and especially. And uh, I want to uh, I don't want to iterate deeply uh, about the uh, recovery policy after the Fukushima Daiichi nuclear power plant accident. So, but I want you to know that uh, this is a very pure English expression rather than the uh, English Japanese translation because I depicted this uh, figure from the IAEA, not from the Fukushima prefecture. So, so we call this an evacuation zone and the deliberation 
deliberate evacuation zone, which were denoted in these two blue. So in this paper, we call these two, a two area as exclusion zone, which were uh, in which the mandatory evacuation order was issued. And uh, surrounded area like yellow and white, white, zone, white zone, in that area, the evacuation zone is not mandated. So we call uh, this area uh, is non-exclusion zone. So the people who migrated from the, these two blue zones are called mandatory evacuees. And the other people who evacuated were uh, the so-called voluntary evacuees. The number of uh, each uh, evacuees are uh, 81,000 for mandatory evacuees and 83,000 voluntary evacuees. So these two distinctions are very, uh, very important uh, for our discussion. So recovery uh, from the nuclear disaster was uh, basically, so there are so many uh, policies were taken, but basically uh, the national government tried to decontaminate it, uh, the, uh, the, the affected area. And uh, primarily, national government was responsible for that work. And the, the, the yellow zone and the white zone, basically the municipal gov government. And uh, secondly, important, uh, as uh, Shoji told us that the, the basically uh, the affected area tried to decrease the uh, radiation dose rate as low as possible. Uh, the basically, the target was one millisievert per year which is as much as uh, the normal circumstances. Um, so some people say this is too severe, but most of the uh, affected people feel free, feel safe uh, if we can decrease at those level. So th this level was a little bit controversial, but government decided to uh, do uh, to uh, uh, this level. So, but on the other hand, this, uh, this made uh, the Japanese government much burden. Uh, for the decontamination. And also, the government had to reconstruct uh, construct interim storage facility. Uh, interim means that this is not the final storage uh, because of the political reason. So, but, so the government uh, started to construct uh, the IS AISF in Okuma and Futaba City, which is very close to the uh, nuclear, uh, nuclear power plant. And the the reason why this uh, storage is uh, necessary was that uh, the, after the decontamination work, there are so many, uh, the, uh, the radiation waste uh, is generated by the decontamination. So we need to storage, store uh, to a certain uh, area. And after that, the population, uh, the, the, uh, the radiation dose rate uh, becomes lower and uh, the government expected to uh, expect that most of the people return to their original home. So this is the uh, basic strategy. And I want to uh, show that the, how much the decontamin decontamination cost, uh, costed. So this table uh, shows that uh, how much the government, national government spent their money for the decontamination, this, which is as much as 23.4 billion US dollars. And uh, all, as, I, as I explained, that the uh, 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 interior storage facility costs uh, 14.3 billion US dollars. So totally, we need 43.3 billion US dollars. So this is about uh, the econometric machine. That so the exponential variable, uh, a dependent variable, is intention to return, which is coded one if the individual will return uh, to his home and code it zero if individual will not return or not decided yet. And the, the data, so the data is very, the same one uh, with the, uh, the Jonathan use. Uh, the, this is uh, collected by the ADR. Uh, uh, what, what is an ADR, uh, acronym ADR? This is uh, established under the uh, Japanese government. Uh, Ministry of Education and Ed Ministry of Education, which is called Al Alternative Dispute Resolution, so which is responsible for the uh, accounting, the compensation, uh, the amount of the compensation for the individual uh, affected people. So uh, th this data set was collected by the other project, uh, which is uh, in which I engaged in, and uh, I and uh, the Kenji and I were involved in. 
and it contains uh, 10, 000, more than 10,000 survey responses. So we are very sure that this data set is one of the most excellent data set uh, talking about uh, the migra uh, affected people after the uh, Fukushima nuclear disaster. And we also depicted the radiation dose rate and uh, and uh, this is uh, this data is coming from the government. So this is the result of the logit analysis, but I'm I'd like to explain briefly the uh, findings. The return promoting factor were identified as age over 16, which we were discussing uh, so far, and household with children, and household with elder person, ha housing tenure, and self-employed. Those, those people are likely to go back. But on the other hand, return obstructing factor were identified as house damage, house inundation, this is caused by tsunami, and high income, distance from home, and radiation dose rate at the origin, which were uh, as, as we expected. And the marginal effect of the radiation dose rate is 0.0033, which means that if the radiation dose rate decreases uh, one millisievert per year, uh, uh, 0.3% of uh, probability to uh, decide to return uh, is decrease. <laughs> okay? So, and we all, the important finding was that we, if we split the sample between exclusion zone and non-exclusion zone, which means mandatory evacuees and non, uh, voluntary evacuees, shows that voluntary evacuees has more simple uh, decision process uh, than mandatory evacuees because uh, they are much care about uh, radiation. But uh, you know that the mandatory evacuees uh, include uh, the people who, who would not uh, evacuate uh, uh, unless the mandatory evacuation order was issued. So this is very uh, complicated. But uh, voluntary evacuees are radiation sensitive. Minor effect of radiation dose rate is uh, much higher uh, than uh, mandatory evacuees, which is very likely. And we run the simulation analysis uh, using that uh, model. So we substitute the radiation dose rate from that of 2012 uh, to uh, that of 2016. And go, bet between these four years, uh, the radiation dose rate uh, reduced drastically, uh, partly because of the uh, decontamination. And that m would have made the people to repatriate, uh, uh, to repatriate a to this percentage. So this is the uh, increased rate, increased uh, probability of return. And we asked, uh, the, I depict, we depicted the poll, uh, which are driven, dri uh, driven by the government. And this is the gap between the poll and the simulation result. So the result is uh, fairly good, except, except uh, several municipalities. But this is the limitation of the poll, uh, which were conducted in these uh, 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 polls. So we uh, believe that this is a, a basically a good fit uh, for our analysis. So the most important thing was that we estimated 10% uh, of the people would have returned because of the uh, decontamination. And also no, no exclusion zone. The voluntary evacuees mean that 7.5% uh, would have returned uh, because of the uh, might have returned because of the uh, radiation dose rate decrease. So now it's time for estimating how much did it cost for repatriating one person. So it is uh, very astonishing that the total uh, US dollar three million for one person repatriation. So, so this is uh, very, we want to move to the finding and discussion. Number one, the economic wealth and return migration decision. So this is a very big issue. So because income was also a powerful indicator that predict higher income, uh, that predict higher income is less likely to return, which is consistent with the uh, existing literature. But this implies that the compensations from TEPCO, TEPCO is the company of the uh, uh, driving the nuclear power plant. So they are responsible for providing the uh, compensation as uh, Shoji explained. But it might have discouraged the people to return home. That will be discussed uh, by the uh, mayor, Naraha Mayor. And individual assistance for 
uh, disaster victims may have the same uh, have the same oh sorry <laughs> may have the same effect. I, I, I want to discuss about uh, this issue with uh, the Catalina people. And second one is voluntary and mandatory evacuees. This is also problematic because the Japanese national government had a clear distinction between voluntary and mandatory evacuees. The compensation is also different. Uh, the voluntary evacuees uh, do not have received so much enough money. The voluntary evacuees are found to be more radiation sensitive, as I told you. So, which means that the term voluntary does not mean that uh, their motivation and necessity to evacuate uh, including their loss in economic well-being caused by evacuation is lower than that of mandatory evacuees. So this is quite difficult, but uh, the policy should target some people. So this difficulty is targeting in the location and the evacuation policy is very, very problematic. And the third one is policy option for recovery. So decontamination is inefficient uh, means for recovery by itself. So we, we believe that other support for such as uh, an, as infrastructure, infra, infrastructure reconstruction, housing recovery, job recovery, and community recovery would be necessary. But on the other hand, the large cost of decontamination would have allowed the government to consider many other options. Or, for example, the building a new community outside, the, uh, far away from their home. So repatriation is not necessary in the logical ending of disaster or death state. So we need to discuss uh, this option with uh, local people and the government and some experts. So thank you very much for your attention. My name is Ken Chairman of Kansai University. Uh, I talked about that uh, fam family finance uh, in the evacuation life one year after a fun, uh, accident. And that uh, now Fukushima uh, evacuates uh, status. So the uh, Fukushima evacuation zone changed the, this slide to show the uh, Professor Tuchida. Uh, it's a uh, red zone and green zone, uh, yellow zone, green zone. Yeah, uh, many people were forced to evacuate, uh, move out, uh, uh, leaving the place uh, by order. Uh, so uh, now, uh, 2018, uh, is that uh, as the contamination, uh, the uh, zone is smaller and smaller. So uh, many people can uh, return the uh, previous zone, but uh, they hadn't. Uh, they, they haven't uh, become so. Uh, where did uh, evacuees move after half a year? Uh, this is a two viewpoints. It's a, the first uh, destination. Uh, for inside or for outside, uh, for inside of Fukushima or for outside Fukushima, for Fukushima. Uh, second, uh, departure. Uh, they, uh, they come from uh, the zone, zone area or out of zone area. Uh, this is uh, uh, from the zone area, uh, 115,000. But that, uh, this one, out of the zone, uh, uh, 36,000 uh, uh, people uh, inside or outside Fukushima. Uh, it is a characteristic uh, point. Get, uh, in the other words, uh, compulsive uh, evacuation or self-evacuation. Uh, this is a two pattern uh, in the Fukushima. So uh, these two actions uh, complicated the move process after disaster uh, in, th in this case. So the migration out of the last area in the, the 2011 the earthquake. Uh, this figure shows the, the change of the evacuated number outside uh, previous prefecture. So uh, gray line, this one, uh, gray line is, is that the evacuated Fukushima uh, move out of the Fukushima. Uh, this is the largest the three prefecture mainly damaged by 2011 earthquake. But uh, uh, Fukushima is not the largest damaged uh, by tsunami and earthquake. So uh, the evacuation action uh, includes the nuclear plant accident evacuation. So now uh, this is uh, 2012, uh, that uh, Fukushima's evacuates outside Fukushima. And uh, this is uh, 2018. Uh, now uh, uh, many people uh, live the uh, 
in, Jap in all Japan now. So uh, uh, at this time, I use the results of the questionnaire survey. A, a research target the household, uh, this one. So uh, I use that uh, lot of that uh, data, uh, the uh, 10,082 uh, that uh, questionnaire data. So uh, the largest variable data could lead to the status for evacuees uh, after one year. So the reason uh, why they select area, uh, many, many people, a uh, lot of the uh, place uh, in Japan. So uh, highest uh, uh, response is that uh, uh, this one. Oh, OK. Uh, my children and relatives live in the area. Uh, this is the uh, uh, highest rate. And uh, near the workplace uh, of the householder or the family member. Uh, this is uh, uh, to uh, connect uh, that uh, house relativity and uh, to work uh, uh, to, to move that point. And the uh, characteristic response is that this one, uh, long distance to avoid uh, radioactivity effect and that uh, availability and assistance program. Uh, this is the uh, uh, nuclear evacuation uh, character. Uh, so uh, to, to go for area and uh, to support uh, the assist, uh, it is a uh, character. The, uh, depend on the uh, relativity network and the effects on the uh, fear for radioactivity pollution and support assistance for uh, recovered life. Uh, th this factor is uh, near or far. Uh, what uh, inside or outside uh, evacuation. Changing family makeup after disaster, why? Uh, it's a, uh, this is a, a character that separate, uh, separating the family, uh, the 40%. So uh, why uh, the separate? Uh, is that uh, family works the first, and that uh, this is narrow, or this is a small that, that, uh, uh, houses, so it uh, separates that uh, uh, Many many households uh, live the separated separately. So uh, finding life situation for work uh, for education of child and uh, house space problem and uh, fear for uh, radio radiation. By moving to house, that uh, what changed their life? Uh, so uh, many people or uh, job change. So this one. Uh, Okay, this uh, uh, employees uh, no change the sixty percent, but the uh, self employees uh, changes the uh, unemployment in the fifty percent. It's a very uh, character so. Okay, uh, this result uh, means that uh, Fukushima disaster and certain action affect the harder for regional job uh, because the damage was whole. Uh, whole evacuation is that uh, whole evacuation uh, is that um, stronger uh, than that uh, regional job. Uh, not only the fishery, agriculture, uh, but also shopping street and that uh, local industry uh, were devastated and faced hard status after one year. But the uh, hardest problem uh, has been no perspective for the future. And uh, the, uh, below the, uh, the economical condition by annual uh, income level uh, in finance, uh, so in, in family. Uh, so uh, basically, income has decreased, income has decreased, and uh, expenses up. Uh, it is very clear. Uh, sheltering life uh, brought fi financial problems uh, from both income and expense. For evacuation uh, action and life, uh, there are items uh, of uh, expense and uh, increasing amounts. So food and water, electrics uh, uh, amounts, uh, uh, many households increase uh, or ordinary life costs. And transportation and communication, uh, their items uh, affect the evacuation. Uh, there were new expense in the temporary life. Uh, and uh, response uh, housing uh, 
uh, is that uh, was not higher than the life continuity cost. Uh, a part of the evacuees paid much for uh, housing costs, but this was not the main fa financial problem uh, because uh, many uh, of them were uh, supported by the uh, governmental uh, political aid about housing. On the other hand, evacuees uh, got special income uh, on the, the various aid and methods. Uh, many evacuees have special income that has a viewpoint of the family finance. Uh, especially, it was uh, unique that the uh, consolation, this one, uh, consolation from the TEPCO uh, for evacuation. Uh, this is not. Uh, this is different from other different other disaster in Japan. Uh, of course, this is a uh, contributing for their life support, but it affects their position of uh, accident victims. So this position uh, connected with the fin financial support would lead to the difficulty uh, for return process. So uh, this is uh, the temporary expense for evacuation and sheltering. Uh, most of them uh, is temporary expense for new location. Yeah, this one, uh, new location life. Uh, for long distance evacuees, moving housing cost was higher. This is for uh, evacuees the uh, higher uh, cost. Uh, other items are not. Uh, other items are not uh, uh, different from the evacuation distance. Uh, uh, family is separating, uh, separating type and uh, uh, previous income. Uh, it is not different. This shows the. Uh, this shows the problem as the evacuation place. Uh, uh, they felt the next housing. They felt uh, next housing and uh, radio, radiation pollution unsafe. Uh, this is not different among the evacuation place. Uh, but I point out that outside evacuees worry about the cost. This one, uh, outside, uh, outside of Kushima's evacuees, uh, they feel the cost uh, in the future. Uh, only one year passed, uh, outside sheltering victims didn't face the lack of money uh, because of AIDS and that, uh, uh, support and special income. But they had already had uh, uh, anxiety for the cost for future uh, now, uh, as, a, as a first uh, one year. So uh, this is the perspective for next settlements. Uh, uh, this and uh, first, uh, most of them uh, recognize themselves as evacuees, uh, not migration uh, at one year. Uh, I think. Uh, I mean, the result is concerned with uh, uh, compensation uh, for evacuation. Uh, actually, this issue will affect their attitude to return or not return. They divide the three categories, return, not return, return, not return, and, uh, uh, return, not return, and yet, yet uh, uh, haven't yet uh, decided it. This factor is not uh, different among the uh, among the area. So, the, what important issue did they think for next settlement? This table shows that the compensation of life, convergence, or uh, decontamination, and or family health condition. These three factors indicate uh, indirectly uh, affection for the economic utility to return or not return, uh, return or stay. This is a conclusion. Evacuate status one year later. Uh, life change, family change, uh, uh, of course, uh, environment change. In the viewpoint of the finance, uh, uh, moving cost and prepare, preparation uh, cost for next new life, uh, it's a fast uh, factor. Second, uh, adaptation for uh, real life uh, in evacuating area uh, in all Japan. So uh, they. Uh, they would cost the uh, life adaptation cost and the uh, human related, uh, relation cost uh, that uh, evacuation the, uh, area. So uh, three, uh, stance of the victims by accident, uh, not earthquake disaster, not other disaster. Uh, special income supports their uh, evacuation life. So uh, it is, uh, uh, we we con we must consider that uh, economic utility uh, of return or stay 
uh, it's that uh, very difficult point and it is a very important uh, factor uh, for the uh, housing finance. Thank you. Were the payments supposed to be permanent? Like, was there a set time that the payments were going to end for the evacuees from TEPCO? The evacuation order was lifted. Once the evacuation order was lifted, the compensation will be stopped. Okay. Right. And maybe it's a question to Shingo as well. Uh, but do you have any information about the subjective well-being or overall happiness of evacuees? I know that there is a large, a big change in their life course and family arrangement, income level. But overall, uh, how that sort of changes can affect the, uh, their well-being or overall happiness in the evacuated areas. Do you have any, that, any information about that in your survey or in other survey? I don't know. <laughs> he said mm. case by case, <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> the mayor of the uh, damaged area. Yeah. About the family separation, so was it predominantly generational? It was elders right. moving away from nuclear family, or was it a mother staying with the children so the child could stay in school mm. and separating from a husband, for example? Right. Most cases that uh, the father uh, uh, lived uh, in near the Fukushima. Uh, but the mother and the uh, minor child uh, go far away uh, uh, to live, uh, to evacuate that uh, radioactive pollution. So, uh, uh, family that separates is uh, father and or mother and child. So, in that case, but, uh, the husband had some job at the yeah, Fukushima yeah, area. Con and, and they also yeah. care about their children to yeah. move away from that side. Let me have a few minutes, uh, well, general discussion, and can all the we'll presenters? The so I don't have any plan about the, <laughs> this discussion, but but I think the well comparison uh, between Katrina and Fukushima results and see whether there is any similarity or differences, and that might be the good starting so point. So if we have any idea on doing this discussion, I have a, I have one suggestion. Right. So, uh, the Jonathan has mentioned that the migration doesn't much care about the disaster risk, uh, right? That um, migration after disaster doesn't much care about the disaster risk, seems to be. Yeah. And the, uh, the uh, Michio and Naoya are working with uh, the, the migration issue before the disaster. So, depending on how much disaster risk is uh, estimated. Right. right. So I want you to uh, introduce your paper <laughs> that's going to be uh, raised. So basically, uh, so the topic of this, well, the symposium is about the post disaster changes. And what uh, was Shingo and I uh, well, recently worked on is about the announcement of potential risks of tsunami risks on the migration patterns. Uh, across uh, well, potentially risky areas, and uh, and the, okay, <laughs> and the result is that well, well, people actually care about the the, uh, the potential risks, tsunami risk uh, of the destination place after the announcement of the disaster risk. So, so that would be pretty much different from what you find in the. Uh, was that was that announcement? Was that after the? Fukushima disaster? Yeah, that was as after the Fukushima. Actually, it, it, it was in 2012. But we are not uh, focusing on the migra migrants from Fukushima. Or just, we're focusing general public. Right. So what I'm thinking is that after major disasters, we might think that risks become more yeah. salient. So if you made that change in 2010 and they'd updated the, the tsunami maps, people might not have reacted in the same way as they, they did after they saw what happened in, in Fukushima. And in fact, that, well, that announcement, uh, that tsunami risk announcement is, well, uh, well uh, as a result of the well, Fukushima disaster, Fukushima and the well, 2011 tsunami disaster, so, so people might be aware more uh, about the potential risks after that event. The difference between your paper and his paper is that the, the migrant from Fukushima has uh, 
need to re relocate. But um, yeah, some people are uh, for, uh, forced to migrate. But the general public in the future tsunami area is not mandatory. They're all voluntary. And they are thinking about where to go. And uh, somebody, some people need to go, but they can choose where to go. Yeah, so that's the big difference. Mm. So, well, so, uh, the tsunami disaster is that uh, is that uh, similar to uh, volcano or volcano? Uh, yeah, volcano disaster uh, before explosion. Mm -hmm. So, so it's that uh, information oh. that the migration is a um, uh, good uh, selection uh, before explosion. But that. Uh, when we we have to distinguish between the short term evacuation yeah, and yeah, the yeah. permanent ma migration. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. Uh, but in case migration. of the volcanic yeah. disaster, basically it it is expected to uh, evacuate short uh, in a very short period. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But that uh, uh, it, it needs that the decision to uh, uh, move out. Uh, uh, but that uh, even if that uh, not explosion. Oh, the place is uh, still now, sti still on. Oh, it's a cost or, or uh, uh, b before uh, migration cost or uh, after the cost is that uh, how evaluate uh, is one. Okay, so the so people's perception yeah. toward risks yeah. can be would, it's a, it's a would drastically yeah, change yeah, it yeah, after yeah. the specific event, like uh, yeah. Right. And I do think it's people have. People view risks very differently across types of disasters. So like people, I'm going, to, I'm going to pick on Adam here for a second. So Adam and I, who do very similar work, uh, Adam is, is not a big fan of seat belts in cars, which is a big risk. I am fundamentally terrified of flying, which is a very, very small risk, <laughs> right? And different types of risks we view as as salient in different ways, depending on the way that we, you know, we view our control over things like that, right? And so, like, like a tsunami, you know, okay, you've got minutes, but 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 a hurricane, you might say, I'm a smart person, I see this coming in, I'm going to evacuate, um, and that that would probably, you know, the things that we perceive as scarier, even if they're not actually riskier matter. And perhaps, well, peop people might, people can learn uh, more about. Well, hurricane yeah. disaster because they're just freak, more frequent. Uh, but for tsunami and nuclear power plant disasters, there there's no chance to learn about that. 